With the current console generation able to play games like Fortnite and Apex Legends at 120 frames per second, I thought I'd pick myself up a budget 144Hz refresh rate monitor to show off all that buttery smooth first person shooter goodness. So today we're looking at this, the Acer Nitro VGO monitor. Let's do an unboxing, set it up and check it out. Let's get to it. For many, being able to play games at a higher frame rate is an absolute must and absolutely trumps 4K. And when you're gaming on a 24 inch monitor, then to be honest, 4K is a bit of a wasted luxury. You're much better off focusing on a monitor that's gonna give you the benefit of all those increased frames per second because it's the frames per second that makes the game smooth to play. So in terms of gaming monitors that are at the budget entry level of minimal latency and increased refresh rate, I decided on this, the Acer Nitro VDO 24 inch model. This is one of a range of sizes that Acer do in their Nitro range of monitors. And what you get here is a 24 inch full HD, that's 1920 by 1080 p IPS monitor featuring AMD FreeSync up to as little as 0.5 milliseconds latency, HDR10, and 144 hertz refresh rate, which according to the box here on the bottom, you can overclock to 165 hertz. Not bad for around 179 pounds. So let's see what you get in the box, set it up, see what it looks like, and see what you get for your money. Okay, so this is the uh, VG240Y Full HD 23.8 inch 60 centimeter screen. So full HD 1920 by 1080 resolution, AMD FreeSync Premium, uh, in-plane switching panel, so an IPS panel, uh, overclock to 165 hertz refresh rate, up to 0.5 milliseconds latency, um, HDR10 and it's sRGB. Anyway, let's get on with the unboxing bit. Okay. So. so standard kettle cable, the standard literature there. Now it comes here with a uh, display port the display port, so that's always quite good. Because usually I prefer to use display port on the PC uh, when I play, because I think it gives you a better uh, picture quality. So it's a display port to display port lead that it comes with there. Then you've got your monitor stand. Obviously the stand there got kind of very strong red accent, well I'd say it's more than accent there, um, with a self screwing screw on the bottom. And this is the other part of the stand, uh, and this obviously connects to the back of the, back of the monitor here, uh, you see. And then here's the monitor. And uh, you'll see here, as I set it up, but you can see it's almost a fully screen, so there's hardly any bevel around the outside. That's really nice. They're really utilizing the whole real estate of the screen there. I really like that. On the back, you've got the three inputs, two HDMI inputs and the DisplayPort input and then uh, an audio jack, 3.5 mil audio jack input as well there. And, and that's basically it. Quite wide uh, here, it's sort of deceptive the way that it's designed because it sort of goes out, but it, 
Well, it doesn't feel that wide. It sort of curves round, if you can sort of see at the back. Um, but very nice. I'm loving the look of this screen. I love the fact that there's hardly any bevel on it. Okay, let's get it set up and then we'll see what it's like in action. Stand goes in the back here, it says. Oh, nice, that's a satisfying click. And then there's only one way this can go on. And there's only one way this can go on. Did not say that twice. And it's got a self-turning tab here on the, on the screw. Make sure it's nice and screwed in. Or you can use a coin. It's one of those things you can either use a coin as well if you want. Yeah, that's nice and firm. And there we go. So it tilts. But it doesn't turn um, either side there. So you've got the tilt, you can tilt it up and down. I think it's a sort of minus five degrees to about sort of 20 degrees. I'll put the stats on the screen for you on, on that one. Um, but there we go, as you can see. Uh, you also see it's a uh, Visa, Visa compatible, so you can mount it on a, a Visa stand. I've got some other Visa stands that actually might work with this, but you can also stick it on a wall and stuff like that. With kind of standard visa mount uh, screw holes there. Power lead is about 145 centimeters uh, long, so bear that in mind. Not super long. Control panels are on here. The control joystick and the uh, buttons for the controls are down this side here. And there we go. I usually use a 4K monitor, so um, the picture quality looks really great because it's a reduced size monitor, uh, even at the 1920 1080p. It does look really smooth there. And I say, I, I'm loving the fact that there's no bevel on the side here. Um, I think it looks really nice. So it's got a movable menu button on the side here, and then the individual buttons here at the back. So here you can select the modes. So you've got different gamer modes. You've got action mode, racing mode, sports mode, and then user. And then you've got your standard mode, eco mode, and graphics. So that uses a bit more power, but gives the graphics slightly a slight enhancement. And then you've got your HDR. So for instance, if we put it on uh, action mode, it just comes up with that. So you'll see there in the gamer mode, it's got this uh, central thing. I consider that a bit ch uh, cheating personally, so I'd probably have that kind of uh, target thing off in the middle. I see it on the uh, Asus monitor as well in their kind of uh, uh, gamer mode. So it's down here, you've got these different aim points uh, down here, so you can have the different icons. Icon 2. Turn it off so you can turn it off there so again you can customize the various uh, settings uh, for a user but in the gaming mode for action it has that kind of target thing that you can switch off or change but the blacks seem very black here um, which is quite good the real test will be what it's like gaming so what i'm going to do is we're going to uh, connect it up to the Xbox Series S and uh, play some Fortnite and Apex Legends and just to kind of give a sense and feel. You're not going to get totally a sense of what it's like because obviously I'm filming this at 24 frames per second, uh, but just to give you an indication. But the screen looks really nice and the blacks on this look particularly dark from when I, uh, where I'm standing. But anyway, that's the basic setup. I'll have a play around with it and we'll have a look at a few kind of different options and we'll see what we think about it. So I've plugged it into the Xbox Series S, and when you plug it into an Xbox Series S, if you've not had a 120 hertz monitor before, connected to your Xbox Series S or your PlayStation 5, whatever, on the Xbox Series S, it says here, 
As soon as it, I've plugged in and turned it on, it says enable advanced video features. It looks like your TV supports ad advanced video features designed to help get you the most out of your game. So this is it basically recognizing that it can handle 120 frames per second. Whereas his older monitor couldn't. Keep this resolution. Um, yeah. Okay, so if I go into the settings here, it's saying um, 4K there, so it's displaying in 4K, even though it's not, strictly speaking, a 4K monitor. You calibrate the um, HDR, but here you've got the option of 120 frames now. Uh, 120 hertz, which we didn't have before, so we're going to switch that on. Keep the new resolution. There we are. Obviously, it's a 1080p screen, so it can only deliver the 120 hertz at the 1080p, but that's fine. We want to play in the 1080p. So that's how you set it up with your Xbox Series S. You, you know, the resolution is at 1080p, even though um, the Xbox Series S wants to put it out at 4K. However, put it out at 1080p on this monitor, which is only a 1080p monitor, allows you to set the refresh rate at that 120 hertz. And then you hopefully should get a much kind of smoother experience. And we'll take a look when we fire up Fortnite and just to see what it look, uh, looks like. How does it feel though? That's the thing. It, it feels amazing. It feels so smooth. It feels super smooth. What would it be like without? Like yeah, it's more about how it feels. Yeah, well, that other screen may have only been at 30 frames. I don't know what the rate, refresh rate was. Probably 60. 50. plastic but for the price hey what do you expect and with no height adjustment it is something to consider when you're buying it the two by two watt speakers are nothing to write home about but hey I never use speakers as I'm always using a headset when I'm playing and hey who use speakers on a monitor overall the design flourishes obviously shout gaming monitor with its angular design and stand and its red trim this is my son's gaming room so uh the red trim is ideal as it matches perfectly with his the red trim on his gaming desk and the red trim on his mouse mat and all of that, etc, etc. The colours on the screen do seem to really pop and they look really good. There's 16.7 million colours on this and I guess this is the benefit of the IPS panel that they're using here where the blacks do look really black when compared to say my Asus monitor. And also of course it comes with HDR. It's good to see a display port on here as well as I use DisplayPort when I'm connecting it to a PC and things like that. But you're all here for the 144 hertz refresh rate. Well, my son was blown away playing Fortnite 120 frames per second on his Xbox Series X. If you've not used a screen that can really showcase 120 frames per second, then it's going to be eye-opening and you'll never want to go back. Throw in the fact that it has an on average one millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync, plus the versatility of the different sort of gamer settings. I know they're a bit gimmicky, but sure. 
but the ability to also set a custom setup as well. Overall, I'd say it's a nice little setup. All in all, there's a pretty good feature set that comes with this monitor, including black boosting modes and a blue light filter. I think this is an ideal budget monitor for the current crop of, you know, generation of gaming consoles that can spit out games at 120 frames per second. As I said, given the size of the 24 inch monitor, you really don't need 4K as 1080p 120 frames per second looks great. And as I said, it's ideal for the current generation of consoles and the low to mid range gaming PCs. So I hope you found that useful. Do me a massive favor, hit the likes because I like it, YouTube likes it, and it helps people like you find content like this. And if you are new here, do me the massive favor, whack that subscribe button, toggle that notification bell, so you know when I go live with content like this. Thank you for spending your time with me, and I'll see you around very soon. Thank you.